Yes, Bob, good morning. Good morning. I apologize for my tiredness. Question, then, therefore, if I follow the argument, then it is impossible to make a morally wrong action right. Yeah, that's right. All things being equal, if an action is of its type wrong, further circumstances don't make it right. So if it's wrong to commit adultery, the fact that I have a difficult marriage doesn't change the fact that the adultery is wrong. So then the follow-up would be, how can, in using your example of Hiroshima, or any war, the just war theory, how does that come into, how can we rationalize and justify murder? If murder is murder, why can we justify it? Ah, but murder is defined as, well, it's defined as many things, but it's an act of killing for which there's no countervailing reason. In other words, if I can, every act, there's an interesting book by a guy named Philip Devine, if you want to really tough work out the philosophy, I would recommend it. He talks about, classifying an action as murder is interesting and complicated on a philosophical level. He says that, his approach is to say that every act, every homicide is a murder unless specific excusing conditions obtain, self-defense, or acting as a soldier in a time of war, or acting as a public executioner. But the presumption would be that unless you can offer these countervailing reasons, every homicide is murder. Now, just war theory presupposes, I think in the Catholic world, anyway, just war theory presupposes a theory of delegation. God is the author of life, and God can create it, and God can take it. And the theory would be that in a just war, God has delegated authority for life and death to the state, and has given them power for the common good, and if going to war is necessary to preserve the common good, they can rely on a divine delegation of authority to command this. This is why an executioner can also act as an executioner without being a murderer, because again, the authority is borrowed or delegated. Now, if you don't buy the theory of delegation, then you have problems with just war theory. Or, there's another possibility, and you could argue that human life is not a final end or intrinsically sacred. You could argue that human beings can forfeit their right to life by behavior. You could argue that human beings are communal creatures, and when you act in such a way as to put yourself beyond the bounds of community, you can be justly removed from the community. I mean, there are any number of ethical arguments you can make, but the one that the just war theory relies on in classical Catholic thought is delegation. So it's not murder, because life belongs to God. It's only murder when I take what doesn't belong to me. The theory would be that I'm an instrument of God, not acting on my own. Yeah? On similar lines, a few years ago that we had cases where the Bush administration was saying it was using enhanced interrogation techniques that other people were calling torture, and the catechism says, well, torture is not allowed in these circumstances, but doesn't mention, for example, torture to get information that is necessary to save lives. Some of that's in scare quotes. Well, I presume you're not torturing just for the fun of it. Presumably. Right. And Pope Benedict made a statement that torture is not acceptable under any circumstances, but again, we lack a definition of torture. I know, that's a bit of a problem. Because, you know, I would think that, I mean, there's torture and torture. I would think that if I had the choice between waterboarding and being forced to look at Richard Simon tapes, I would choose waterboarding. Richard Simon will give you a massage if you don't know. Ugh! Okay, what do you want to know? Anyway, the problem, though, is, see, imprisonment could be defined as torture, or, you know, does any form of making somebody uncomfortable to induce them to talk, does that constitute torture? Or is it the 
or is torture defined by bodily injury? Uh, I don't really know. It seems it seems clear to me that I mean you can take you can duck the moral issue by saying well torture doesn't work anyway, and so, and you could, you could abandon the practice of torture simply by saying that it doesn't get you the information you want because why? Well because. People will say anything to avoid torture. But let's suppose torture did work. So I mean, uh, take, make it harder, don't duck the question. Suppose torture really did get you the information you needed to save lives. The argument against torture, fundamentally, I think, is this. <coughs> that, um, it's a Kantian kind of argument. It, it, uh, the argument against torture is that it reduces a human being to a means rather than an end. See, the humanity of the person is being used, is being instrumentalized. And you're really depriving someone, by torture, you're depriving someone of the use of their reason and their choice. You make conditions so horrible that they will do anything to, tell, to get out of the pain, which means includes telling you what you want. Now, can you do that? Can you uh, really override someone else's freedom and mind? Can you literally drive someone out of their mind to get information? That seems like a direct violation of their humanity. Um, so on Kantian grounds, I mean, the, I, I think that you'd have to say it's an intrinsically evil act. Um, now I think that, uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, there's always an on, on the other hand. <laughs> uh, sometimes you really need the information, and the enemy has really made himself kind of an instrument of an evil foreign policy. You could say that the person, by becoming a sol soldier in a terrorist organization, uh, has been willing to treat you as a means to an end, uh, and that therefore. Uh, conditions of normal justice don't apply. I, I don't buy that. I don't, I, don't, I don't really think you can lose your dignity that way. Um, Thomas Aquinas I actually thought that you, I mean, at least, I don't know how literally to take it, but when he discusses capital punishment, he says that some human beings have reduced themselves to the level of beasts in their action, and because they've been beastly in their action, they can be treated like beasts. Another argument that he uses is that just as you would hack off a limb that was gangrene to save the life of the body, so you can hack off diseased members of the social body in order to preserve the life of the whole body. That's kind of utilitarian, it strikes me, you know. Um, and of course, Thomas, as a metaphysician, knew that you really couldn't lose your human dignity, that, 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 that once you have, once you're a human being, you're a human being. And it should be treated as such, regardless of, of the bad choices you've made. Now, the problem is, would you be willing to listen to that? If you thought that torture worked, and you thought that getting this information would save New York City, uh, would you not go ahead and do it? And if you don't like New York City, pick a city you like. <laughs> um, you know, Rome, let's say. Um, <laughs> Uh, that, 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 that becomes tough, but that's where you just have to make your principles. Either you're, you're a utilitarian, where means justify, ends justify means, and a good end can allow you to re-describe an action, or, or not. Uh, I, I think you, you think you probably have to take the absolutist line here and, uh, and refuse to torture, even if you may lose a lot of people.